Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Trade Winds RV Center here to congratulate you on your purchase of your Jayco J Feather X19H hybrid travel trailer. Pretty cool trailer here. I'm going to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration. On your campsite, leave room for your awning to come out. On both ends, leave room for your bunks to come down. And then I want you to think about where your water and power connections are going to be. Your power is going to be all the way at the rear and your off camp side or your driver's side of your tow vehicle. And your water connection is going to be just in front of the tires on your tow vehicle. On the driver's side of your tow vehicle. Park accordingly so you can utilize facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive, first thing you do is level your unit. For any unit, you have this power tongue jack with a night docking light. Simply lower or raise the unit till it's level. You do underneath here, under this rubber stopper, have a little crank for manual override, hand crank in your storage. You can, can bring this up and down if you don't have power. Speaking of power, check your terminals when you arrive, make sure them are nice and tight. You have a wiggle loose going down the road. What you got at unit level, that's what you're going to do is stabilize it. On all four corners of the unit, you have these stabilizing jacks. Three quarter inch hand crank. Get on there and crank these down. Now, as I come down, I will recommend stabilizing jack pads. Jack pads are gonna protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt, debris, hot black top in the summer. Uh, better distribute the weight. Get you a four pack of those from our store with your 10% off coupon. Run all four of these down in all four corners just until they're taut. Remember, they're stabilizing jacks, not leveling jacks. You don't wanna change the levelness. Once you have some resistance in your crank here, you know that you're down far enough. Run all four of those down. You have our unit level, stable. Now we can hook up our power and water. There's the hand crank for your overdrive on your tongue jack. 30 amp cord here on the back of the unit. The way these new ones go on. Got a black washer here. Little pistol grip. Green means you got power to the cord. Put it in at a little angle. Twist to the right. Put on your black washer. Now at the end of that 30 amp cord, if you do need to plug in at home, we have a 30 to 110 adapter. It comes with your convenience pack. Got our power hooked up, let's hook up our water. At the campsite, you use your city water connection. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. Use this when putting fluid in here or into your black tank flush. Hook that up, hook your hose up, but don't turn our hose on yet. All the way at the front of your unit here on your off camp side, your hot water heater. All we're gonna do at this point, this will lift right off here. Just make sure our drain plugs back in. Get that in there nice and tight, then you can go ahead and turn on your hose. Now if your hose has been on for a while, go inside, open up your hot water tap. That'll let the air out of the lines. Close that, then you know you can turn on your hot water heater from indoors. There is an on off element switch down here. That stays on off unless you're hooked up to 110. When you're hooked up to 110, turn it on here as well as indoors. Hot water heater doesn't seem to be working. A couple reset buttons here. If that's bubbled out, just press that back in. And then your pressure release valve. Let's say you're gonna go camping and you're not gonna use potable city water. You're gonna use potable water. So right next to your city water connects your potable water tank. Simply fill this up with a hose. No need for the water pressure regulator. Two ways to tell it's full. One, there's an overflow valve right here, 
or two on the inside where you check the levels of your tanks, black, gray, and fresh water tank. You hold that fresh water tank button down, they'll tell you when this is full. Just remember, when using this potable water, fresh water, is when you're gonna wanna turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump when you're using city water. That's already pressurized. All right, we're set up with power and water to camp. Let me walk you around the rest of the unit. Outside here, again, at the front here, we have our hot water heater. Your stabilizing jack. Outdoor shower. A couple of low point drains underneath here. One there for your potable water, and those two there when you hooked up to city. Again, outdoor shower, city water connect, potable water. This is a flue for your furnace. If you're running your furnace, steer clear of that. It'll get rather warm. Here's where you plug your cable in. Black tank flush, we'll talk about that when we dump our black tanks and leave the campsite. Rear stabilizing jack and power. Spare tire with a cover. You can also prep for a Furion backup camera. A device you can purchase from our store that sets on the dash you tow vehicle. Electronically communicates with this, giving you a backup camera for the unit. Your big awning. I don't have it all the way out yet. I'm gonna show you how far to run it all the way when we get there. You do have an adjustable pitch. If it's raining, you want the rain to come this way, simply pull down on that. Or on the other end. Entry doorway. You do have a light here for underneath your step. Front of your unit, that's a vent for your microwave. Your outdoor speakers. You can hook up a TV out here. Cable and a couple 110s or a couple 110s for a crock pot if you want to set something outside. Here's a lip for your griddle. And right there's your quick connect for that. Your pass through storage. There's a cover for your propane. Again, your hand crank. Your battery post. Your propane is on a regulator. Simply open them up and point this toward the tank you wish to be using. And lastly here you have a uh, connection for solar. You can hook up a solar panel and it'll trickle charge your batteries. What covers everything on the outside? I'm gonna show you how to open up this. These do lock with a key. Simply pull on that, that'll release these. Come to this side, release it, and pull your bed down. It rests on its own. I just straighten these canvases out here. We're going inside, pushing it out. Well, it covers everything out here. Let's go inside. First thing I like to point out when you come in the entry doorway is where the fire extinguisher is. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows the fire extinguisher is located by the entry doorway. To your right, as soon as you walk in, is your control panel. So here's your brand new battery. Here's your fresh tank. That's the button I said you can hold when you're checking your potable water. Then your black and gray tanks. Here's where you turn on your water heater. If hooked up to electric. Here's where you turn it on if hooked up to gas. Here's where you turn on your water pump when using potable water. Awning light, living room lights, and your awning extend. Okay, how, to run, how far to run that out? Ran it most of the way out. Just want to run it out until you see that white flap there fall down to nine degrees. Once you see your black bar there, you know you're down far enough. Run that back in for you real quick. I'm running it out. Go ahead and shut off my awning light. So, all right, let's continue through your unit. Straight ahead on the wall when you come in, this is just a template for the techs if you ever decide to get this wired for solar. Self explanatory microwave. Your stove does have a fan and a light. Your stove itself, glass top makes an excellent backsplash. You have a panel light. Simply turn this. To light, hit your spark, there's your flames. Same thing for your oven. Turn this to light, spark it down here, and then set it to the desired temperature. No pilot light underneath anymore. 
and if you click this down here you have an oven light in your unit you do have a lot of individual lighting one touch lighting they call it sound system put that up to fm i don't know if we'll be able to pick up anything in here let's try to scan no nothing so you can play your music indoors outdoors or both See how it shuts it off indoors, plays it outdoors, or you shut them both off or crank the whole campsite, Bluetooth, AM, FM, auxiliary, USB port, touch it for mute, hold it in for off, another one touch lighting here, your sofa here does jackknife down, access to your storage, that'll lay down to a, another bed for you, just lift up on the front, pull forward on the back, to bring that back down Turn around your unit here 110 there your table simply lift up and these bars will come out set your table on these lips here remove your back cushions that'll make another bed here's your furnace turn that on hear that running shut that off now your furnace fan does take a few minutes to shut off all the time you prep for a tv up here Push this accordingly if you're hooked up to cable or an antenna. Your Furion fridge at the bottom of that is an access panel to your breaker and fuse boxes. Next to that is your 12 volt carbon oxide and propane detector. Now, the reason I mentioned this 12 volt is it's always running off your battery. So if you're not plugged in somewhere and you're going to be gone for the day, disconnect one of your battery posts to keep this from running your battery down while you're gone. In the bathroom here, you have lighting and a fan. This is where your 110 GFCI reset is. And let's set your back bunk up. So inside your mattress will be this pole. One curved end like that. And one crooked end like that. Make sure that is pointed up. We're going to take this. We're going to place it right between those screws, snap that in there, and push it out. Once that's pushed out there, take this end, push it in, and tuck it right in there. And lay down your mattress. Repeat the same thing in the front, sets down the same way. Up here in the ceiling is your AC. Crank that up real quick. See that works. If you have a central fan up here, start to stop here, four different levels, hand crank open, and your smoke alarm. Well, that about covers everything on the inside. Let's act like we're leaving the campsite now. So what I'd like to do for lighting, is I will shut off with my living room light here, then I can see all the individual lights that I need to go through and shut off. I'm going to leave this one on real quick as I bring your mattress back up and clamp it in. You done videoing, Mike? Finishing it right now. All right, hold on, because I need measurements of them beds. Okay. And tags. Somebody wants heated mattresses. So I wanted to come out here and show you how this looks open. Make sure all your canvas is pulled out over these edges. No longer canvas, so polypropylene. Tuck everything in nice and good. And that's how your bevel looks set up. All right, let's close everything up. All right, so our lights are good. So what we do here, unhook that, pull this in. This is going to lay right in here, and we're going to fold our mattress up in half. Yeah. it all up this way. Grab your back half. Sorry, it's probably hard to see the way I'm doing this. But. Your mattress will lay up here, and your bar will lay down there like that. Now we head outside. 
When you lift this up, just tuck in your canvas all, all the way. I'm going to attempt to do this one-handed here. So as it goes up, you're going to have to tuck these in. So I'm going to set this down real quick. Just make sure your canvas is tucked in. Lock these back in. And lock this. Repeat the same on the front. closed up bring up our stabilizing jacks unhook our cable and water I like to say it in that order because that way you know your water is undone get up underneath here you hooked up the city water dump both of those potable water open up that tank Remember your hot water heater lift up on this pressure release valve that's going to drain all the water out of there once it does then you can remove your drain plug Hook up your hitch and head on up to the dump station. At the dump station, take the sewage hose, come in your convenience pack. Hook it up right here on the end. And pull our black tank. Now once it sounds like that's no longer draining, you're going to again take your water pressure regulator and hook up to this black tank flush valve. Hook up the hose at the dump station for a good five minutes with your black handle open. Turn that on and let that wash out your black tank. Get all that nastiness out of there. Come down here, shut off that hose and unhook it. Close your black tank, pull your gray handle. Your gray handle is gonna be your cleaner waters, your sinks and your showers. That's gonna clean out your sewage hose for you. Close that up, unhook it, and conveniently store your sewage hose in your bumper. Nice sanitary place for it. And head on home. Again, we thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this Jay Feather for many years to come. Happy camping.